，我也有，<笑>我也有这里，中间，这个也是，我也有这里，<笑>还有后面也有，一二三四，拜拜，拜拜。Speaking of which, speaking speaking of which, I want to do a whole series of videos in the near future, and I I need to I, I haven't talked about it in the past because I don't want to somebody else to steal the idea, but I'm about to do it. It's going to be a series of videos called Red Light Red Light Conversations, and what I'm going to do is is I'm just going to pull up at red lights like this, and then turn and try to strike up a conversation with the person on the motorcycle next to me, and then see what kind of conversations I can get going. I'm fairly shy. People don't realize that about me. Um, sometimes in my videos, I do crazy stuff, but uh, that's I'm, a, I'm I'm impulsive, okay? And I'm a little bit like like I'm I don't have Tourette's, but I'm I'm darn close. So I do th things impulsively. Like I I I recently wrote, I recently told someone and I've been told this by people is that I do crazy things off camera more than I do on camera and it's stupid because in the videos where I do silly stuff or crazy stuff there it's wildly popular among my viewers so if I had any amount of intelligence I would put on an act and just be crazy for all my videos and there are uh, motor vloggers that do that oh there's one in particular. You guys, you guys, and you guys in the comments know who he is. There's one guy in particular. He's, a, he's an American guy, and he has like a little bicycle that I think it's he named it Big Bertha, something like that. He rides around on a little bicycle, and he has a motorcycle, and I think he has a tricycle, and he has like different things. And, he, and what does he do? He he puts he gives everybody stickers, and it's high fives. He tries to get he counts how many high fives he can get off strangers each video. So his videos, he doesn't ride, he's a motorcycle vlogger, but he doesn't actually ride all that much. He'll just ride to places and then walk around and try to talk to as many strangers as possible. And it's fun to watch his videos because you, you get to see him interact with so many different people. And there's usually, guaranteed, there's going to be a couple of cute girls in his videos that he will, he'll use for the thumbnail. And that's, again, understandable. Anyways, uh, what was I talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, just the fact that I'm shy. People don't realize that. And, uh, yeah, I do crazy shit, like, on my tours and stuff. When I'm, when I'm giving a tour, I do a lot of impulsive craziness stuff. And then my tour guests are always like, why didn't you record that? Why didn't you get that on video? Why didn't, that was hilarious, and you freak those people out and this and that. Why didn't you record? And I'm like, I just thought of doing it, so I did it. And if I, if I put, if, like, if I, if I took the time to plan out something funny, then I would probably become too shy to actually do it. If, if the thought pops into my head, then I do it. But, um, uh, that guy's running the red. Not that guy's. Anyways, uh, hi guys, M13 here. <laughs> We're downtown. The weather is beautiful. The air is very clear because it, it rained today. Um, it rain. I mean, it rained today. <laughs> I hate when my voice breaks. I actually have a very deep and sexy voice, <laughs> but you would never, you wouldn't know it from watching my videos because of my videos. I'm always like, "Hey guys, M13 here." <laughs> I don't know why. I, if you're talking to me on the phone, girls that have been lucky enough to date me will tell you that I have one of the best f phone voices around period why are we in the red i'm following the gps so nobody can blame me for this but we are we are full on in the red light district right now you guys want to see prostitutes i heard at least two yeses so i'm going to show you uh down this road here we go uh this is all brothels on either side of the road this is the yeah red light district i learned that this was the red light district a long time ago <laughs> that doesn't sound good yeah, I, I just I just remember I think I asked somebody and they pointed it out to me like a long time ago. So we didn't see anything too interesting. Sometimes you see the girls coming or going from work, and usually they're they're they're, they're usually they're beautiful. Uh, I wonder if that street is too. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, not too interesting, but that's it nonetheless.
Oh, and why did my... Yeah, okay. Yeah, the air is especially clean right now. Like, just... It's been really humid lately. And when you go outside and it's super humid, it, it, the, the humidity almost adds like a thickness, a soupiness to the air. And it doesn't seem... It seems like your visibility is reduced. But it rained during the day today. And it seems very dry out right now. So the, that... Yeah. idiot doesn't even have his headlight on three people on a scooter cuts me off at an intersection and his headlights not on like geez um do we have a oh I just saw the movie uh, downsizing it's really good like I, I thought it was just gonna be a silly comedy about being small but no it was like it had messages and it had it had some really funny bits uh, there's a Vietnamese woman in it that has like a couple of the funniest lines of the whole movie. And Matt Damon was really good. It was like, there's some really deep messages in that movie. Uh, another movie I saw recently was uh, It Comes at Night. It's interesting, when you look at the reviews for it, uh, critics all kind of rated it highly. Uh, real people either loved it or hated it. It, didn't, it seemed like there was no in between. Nobody said it was an okay movie. They either said it was a really good movie or it was like an awful movie. Uh, I would say it was really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it doesn't really have an ending so much. Um, so some people were kind of disappointed. And then uh, I was reading it. And then, and then there's a lot of things in the movie that aren't really explained. And then I was, read, I was reading an interview with a director for It Comes at Night, and the director pretty much said, he, yeah, he did that on purpose because he wanted people... He, he doesn't like it when all the details are filled in. He likes to leave something to your imagination. But a lot of people were saying, yeah, that sounds like a cop-out for poor writing skills. Like, it was like... Because he, he didn't even have the answers. That's, that's the problem. Like, I don't mind if he leaves it to our imagination and then later on he explains it and says, oh yeah, in actuality, when this happened, it was because of this and it was so-and-so that opened the door and blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't. He's just like, yeah, you can just imagine whatever you want. And I'm like, well, that, that kind of that kind of made, that kind of, the director saying that kind of soured the taste of the movie for me. That's how she actually walks. I shouldn't talk though because I walk like a handicapped person evidently. I don't know that I walk like a handicapped person because now I, you know, like my legs are healed, I can jump on them, I can I can sprint, I can run upstairs, I can take the stairs two at a time. So to me, I feel normal. But just recently I was with somebody and then they were having I don't know, they were they're having their their pants were like the wrong size or something and they were walking kind of funny and then they're like, "Yeah, my pants are giving me problems." He goes, "Now I walk like you." And then they walked kind of funny, like over-exaggeratedly funny for a bit. And I was like, it actually really hurt my feelings because I, I wasn't aware of the fact that I walk abnormally. And they kind of pointed it out in like, <laughs> they, they just assumed that I knew, but I didn't. That's a sad thing. They're just like, oh yeah, look at me. I'm walking like a handicapped person, just like you. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> I walk like what? I, I, I didn't know that. And I didn't. So, yeah, evidently I, I walk like a handicapped person. If I concentrate on it, I know I can walk normal. Because with a little bit of effort, I can walk normal. So, I, I think I might just be limping because I was limping for so long that it's become a habit. I might not necessarily need to limp anymore. So, it's not necessarily my, my natural walk might not be a handicapped walk. I might just be doing it because it's become a, ha a bad habit like so therefore with a bit of effort I could maybe wean myself off limping anyways this is not a topic I don't know what is there a topic for this video I had one when I was gonna start um yeah There's a, there's a new uh, blogger in Taiwan, I'm not going to say his name, and I'd prefer if you didn't say his name in the comments, and I know a lot of you will know his name, because a lot of you follow multiple Taiwan or Asian bloggers, but there's this new blogger in Taiwan, and his videos are getting more views than mine, which isn't that hard nowadays, so, but the problem is, is that I'm watching his videos, and there's so much dis, like the fucking, the guy just showed up, 
Like he just appeared in Taiwan like in the last few months. And then his videos are like, I'm watching his videos and I'm like, shit, like half the shit he's, half the shit he's saying is like bullshit. Like I've lived here 20 years, I know. If you want to learn about Taiwan, ask me, not him. He doesn't know dick. He was literally talking about something in one of his videos like, I like Taiwan because it has this and this and this. And I'm like, it literally has none of those things. You know, like, what are you talking about? You moron. Like, ugh. So yeah, that's 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 an annoyance for me. Um, oh, I'm gonna show you guys something on this street. I just remembered why I was coming down this street. This is just a. We we were in the middle of the city a second ago, and now look at us. Now we're in the middle of uh, like farmland. This is rice on either side of us. It's generally always rice in Taiwan, which I guess makes sense because Asia and all that. But. Um, Hold on a sec, I need to... Oh, this is what I wanted to show you guys. How, uh, I don't want to have my headlight on, but I'm going to do it anyways. Look at these homes, look at these houses. They're just all these houses, and they have no curtain. Well, they have curtains, but they leave them open, why not? They're in the middle of, you know, like, this is their living rooms, and these are all separate ho homes, you know? Oops, and it's a dead end. <laughs> I'm trying to be all inconspicuous as we spy on these people in their homes. But yeah, yeah, you have these elderly people, farmers and whatnot, and probably a lot of these fields around there belong to them, and then they all just live in this small community. And I think it's, I think it's wonderful. I really love the, uh, the fact that they, they, they don't, um, they don't close their curtains. They have curtains, but they just, yeah, it's just, it's neat. They shouldn't really need to close the curtains because like how they're not going to get anybody walking. There's no sidewalk here. Nobody's going to be walking by their house and peeking in on them, other than <laughs> weirdos with cameras <laughs> to show millions of uh, thousands of people. <sighs> but yeah, you know what I mean. It's just neat. It's neat. It's, it's so foreign. Uh, when I was I was in the uh, well, on one of the times when I was back visiting. Uh, people in Canada when I was back visiting Canada uh, I was walking around doing a video blog it's, a, it's one of my private series I have a Canada private series and I'm just walking around with a camera and talking to the camera and just kind of I'm walking in a residential area suburb and more than once I had people yell at me from their living rooms don't point that camera at my house and I'm literally not, I'm like, if I'm pointing it at their house, it's not more than a second or two. I'm just, I'm, I'm walking like blocks with a camera in my hand. And I'm pointing it just wherever I'm looking because I'm, you know, that's how I, that's how I, I blog. And people would just see me walking along and casually point a camera at their house and they would, they would run to their window and yell at me. And I'm like, it was just, it was absolutely, utterly pathetic. Like, and, and I know some of you are going to defend them. Some of you are going to be like, oh, well, because of theft and maybe you could be casing the joint or this or that. And it's like, it's the same thing as like when you're, you have a camera and you're in like a, a bakery or something. Bakeries, uh, like, I, I went to like a cheesecake, cheesecake, uh, a dessert restaurant in Canada. And I was taking pictures of some of the, the cool cakes. And, the, and, the, and, the, and then one of the workers came up to me and he was like, you could tell he was happy to pick a fight with me, which I can't really insult too much because that's kind of that's kind of like me. I, I, I find conflict to be uh, stimulating. So anyways, the, the waiter comes up to me and he's just like, yeah, you can't take pictures in here. And it was just like, it, it was the way he said it, you know, he could have been more polite about it. And then he kind of just looked at me to be like, almost like, yeah, are you, are you, what are you going to do about it? Like, are you, are you going to still take another picture? And then he was going to come and throw me out or something. Like he was looking to pick a fight and he was a waiter in a restaurant. And, um, and it's, it's, oh yeah. And, and fudge factory, the fudge, I went to like the fudge restaurant, fudge, not restaurant, the, the confectionery shop, the fudge shop. And I remember I asked them, I'm like, yeah, can I take some pictures of this? Cause we don't have anything like this in Taiwan. And they're like, no, you can't, no pictures allowed. And I'm like, why? Because you think I might be the competition and I'm going to steal your, your fudge setup? And they're like, yeah, I guess that could be the reason because, you know, they're not the boss, they're just staff. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure if I was like a spy from a rival fudge corporation 
I wouldn't walk in here and ask your permission, you know, and I'm pretty sure if I was a spy, I could just, you know, use a hidden camera and get all, all the video footage and shots that I need, you know, like, I think nowadays in the 21st century, plus nowadays everybody, you know, like, if I was a spy, I could just walk in here talking on my, pretending like I'm talking on my phone, but in actuality I could have the phone on uh, camera mode and be recording video. So I could just walk around with the, cam the phone in my hand, pretending like I'm talking to somebody, and meanwhile just be recording everything, and you wouldn't know. I think I think in the 21st century, or, um, the whole no photos in the store, because you see it on everywhere. You see it at Costco, Walmart, they're like, no pictures allowed inside. It's, 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 a, it's a redundant rule nowadays, because with, with smartphones, you can't stop people from taking pictures. I remember all those idiots getting worked up about Google Glass. Remember that? That was big. That was big news. People were wearing Google Google Glass into like stores and shit, and people were kicking them out because they they, they might possibly be re be recording video with their with their glasses. You know, <laughs> it was retarded. And if you're wearing Google Glass and you looked at somebody, then they would they would get angry because you they don't know if they're being recorded or not. You could do the same thing with a phone, man. Anybody with a phone in their hand could possibly be recording you. You don't know. But you guys remember that, right? That was a big that was a big controversy for extremely dumb people. Ah! Your 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 glasses have a camera functionality and you just looked at me for a half a second. Ah, I'm going to pick a fight with you now. Ah! Stupidity of people, man. people say too like when you talk about how certain animals might be smarter than us like dolphins and other animals and then you get people that comment like oh yeah because dolphins have invented computers and do dolphins have invented this and that and I'm like well how many of those things have you invented you personally like when was the last time you created a fucking microchip out of thin air you personally uh, uh, exactly so what you're you're what does that mean by default you're you're dumber than a then a, what, a chicken? A chicken also hasn't invented any of those things, so you're on par with the chicken for the amount of shit that you've invented? It looks dumb. Anyways, I, this video, I don't know, I think that's the end of this video. <laughs> Literally no topic whatsoever. Uh, when I started the video, I had a topic, and I remember what it was, but it's way too late to get into it now, so save that for another day. Um, thank you all. I got a bunch of new uh, supporters on Patreon. I think if I get like something like 15 more p supporters on Patreon, then I want to be forced to do a, a review of a different city or town uh, every month because I, I have uh, goals. And once I reach 100 supporters on Patreon, I promised that that's what that's what I would do as a reward to them. I would make a video each month, either on YouTube or uh, I'd, it'd probably be uh, on YouTube. Yeah, the Patreon videos would still be just for the Patreon supporters, but I I would start using the extra money to set aside a day for re doing reviews of towns and villages in Taiwan. Yeah, so uh, I got a interview tomorrow for a teaching job. It's just uh, it's it's only a few hours each week. People, uh, recently, I made a video where I talked about my my financial situation, and then a few people commented, well, why don't you teach? Why don't you go back to teaching? And the reason is, if I get a full-time teaching job, then I would have to quit my tours completely. And I've been building, I've been create, working on building up, creating the perfect tours for the last eight years. And my tours are at the point now where it's, it's, it's literally the best possible experience that a, a human being could have on the planet Earth for 11 days, <laughs> you know what I mean? I have the best, funnest, most interesting tour for the dollar on the planet. Yeah, and I'm very confident saying that. I'm, I'm, there's probably better tours than mine at like triple the cost, but for what you're paying, there's probably, it's, I, I'm very, there's like, I'm very certain that it's the best tour on the planet Earth. Because that's what I've been told by many, many people that have done my tour and done many, many other tours. I've, I've had, I think now I've had about five millionaires, like really, yeah, there's five multi-millionaires do my tour. And each time I'm always very uh, curious what they'll think of my tour because they're, they're rich guys that travel around the world 
every single year and do multiple tours in multiple countries every year. And all the millionaires that have done my tour have said that my tour is literally the best tour they've done. It's better than, than other tours that have costed five times as much. So with that in mind, I don't want to abandon my tours completely and go back to teaching English. So that's, that's, so in answer to your question, why don't I go back to teaching full time? Uh, because in order to do so, I would have to uh, dissolve my tour company and the tours would be non-existent. Anyways, so yeah, thanks for the, the new supporters on Patreon, I appreciate you guys. And I'll be sure to get something new up on Patreon for you guys.